Hey guys, Doug here, coming to you with another quick YouTube video. Today we're looking at 4K monitors. Obviously with the craze being with 4K TVs or UHD TVs and monitors, today I want to highlight a couple different screens. Um, this isn't so much an unboxing video as it is more some hands-on experience with a couple different 4K computer monitors. One of which is the 27-inch Dell P2715Q, the other is the Samsung 28-inch U28E590D. Had three or four days to get both these screens in, play with them, photography editing, gaming, all that, obviously. Um, can't find a store or a site that directly compares these in a hands-on perspective, so I wanted to make a quick video and show you guys uh, my thoughts on that. So before I power these screens on, I'm going to go through some of the unboxing in terms of what you get with each screen and the flexibility they provide out of the box. So for the Samsung screen, what you get first is it's packaged very similarly to a TV. You have the monitor panel between two big chunks of styrofoam. It connects to a big power brick, which then you have a cord off that that's right angled, kind of similar to a laptop, but interesting to see for a monitor. In terms of cable connections, you get a full-size display port, full-size HDMI, and that's pretty much about it. To connect the whole thing together, very easy. You have a monitor neck, connects to the monitor base, you just screw the two big screws in, and you're good to go. Uh, setting up's not very difficult. Now that being said, the U28E590D screen's not very flexible in terms of ergonomics for desk viewing. It can tilt forward and back a little, but that's really all you get. There's no pivoting, there's no panning, there's no height adjustment. It sits pretty low, so you may have to adjust your chair or how that screen sits on your desk for the best uh, viewing ease. In the Dell box, once you open its little clamshell castle of a brilliantly engineered box, that's pretty crazy, so props to engineers on that. Um, the Dell box, pretty flexible. It says you have the monitor stand all isolated by cardboard buffers, uh, very neatly designed. You have a driver disc. USB 3.0 cable for the USB 3.0 hub on the monitor. Comes with a full size to mini display port cable, full size HDMI cable, and uh, various warranty paperwork. Um, included also in the Dell box, not sure if you can see on camera, is a calor uh, calibration sheet right from the factory that they show this is a below Delta E of 3 monitor, meaning it's quite good for color accuracy reproduction and uniformity out of the box. Below, if again, not sure how readable this is, uh, they split the screen to 25 squares. Ideally, it should be 100% across all, but, you know, it is what, <laughs> you know, panel uniformity is what it is. So in this case, it's anywhere from 99 to 101%, meaning I still happen to score a pretty good uniform panel uh, across the entire screen size, which is great. And uh, connecting the Dell, very easy. There, there's no screwing that's needed. The monitor base comes in and down, latches, and that's really about it. Dell, of course, being in the educational, government, family, business, all the fields of who it sells its products to make something very flexible out of the box. The stand is substantial, being about half the weight of the package in its entirety, very robust, and it gives you full pan, tilt, control, can rotate 90 degrees if you want to view the monitor in portrait mode, full height adjustment, um, very, very flexible. If I had the score, the Dell blows the Samsung away in terms of just where you can position the screen out of the box. Both monitors have Visa, um, I think, 100 millimeter wall mounting points if that's something for you, but for me it's just going to sit on the desk. So um, that's pretty much about it. Let's look at the screens. All right, and here we have it. Sorry for the close viewing angle, guys, but my wide-angle camera lens right now is out for servicing. So, amazingly, these all fit on my desk. Barely. Uh, on the left here is my old uh, Dell U2709W 27-inch uh, screen. It is IPS. It is 1920 by 1200. Uh, the middle here is the Dell P2715Q, you know, 3840, 2160, 4K or UHD or 2160p or whatever you'd like to call it, um, Ultra HD screen, 27-inch. Uh, 
and the right here is the Samsung 28 inch uh, U28E 590D, again a 4K screen. So now time to boot up, I should just be able to duplicate Windows Display on at least these two 4K screens at once, and we'll take a look. All right, and here we have both panels turned on, button standby. The Dell from here is pretty dark and uniform, although again, maybe that's attributing it to not being an ultra sharp IPS panel, but it's pretty uniform from here. Up close, it does have some strong backlight bleed. The Samsung being TN panel again is pretty bright, but again, fairly uniform, at least from here. And the Dell powered off. Time to boot these and look at Windows. Alright, and here we have Windows 10. Looked like it booted just fine. Uh, never tried this with double monitors, so I have both these screens hooked up with DisplayPort out of my Titan X and through the control panel. Sure enough, they look like they will still do 4K at 60Hz with both screens. Again, the center is the Dell P2715Q. The right is the Samsung U28E 590D. Uh, maybe you might be able to tell from the camera, but the Samsung here is a little bluer or cooler for sure. Um, both these screens are left pretty much as is by default, um, out of the box. Dell's calibrated mode from the factory is turned on, and um, that's pretty much it. The Samsung does try to compensate for the TN panel with like lean back, group view, different modes, uh, and some basic color and brightness controls, but that's really about it. You don't get too much adjustment. Uh, unfortunately, the same with the Dell. You get color controls, brightness, contrast, some presets, but that's really about it. Okay, and here's the control panel. Uh, you can see I had the desktop pretty big coming into Windows 10. I never went into Windows 8. I went right from 7 to 10. And I have sized everything up to 250%. So that does make it pretty big. But the good news is since Windows 10 does support ultra high definition displays much more natively than previous versions of the OS, scaling up is really great and pretty easy to read had no problem connecting the screens and I should still drive 4K 60Hz through the advanced control panel now that being said because I'm an old school VGA guy even up into the 2000s here uh, something new with testing DisplayPort I can't fault on either monitor but it seems to be an issue where the icons will just sort themselves or windows will power off and by default power the screens down and kind of internally choose to change the desktop resolution. Meaning every time you power the screens up, stuff's kind of, well, at random. So actually to fix this, I found a very simple program called Desktop OK. You basically set your icons how you want it, say set, it makes a profile, and then you just load it. Uh, whenever you need to fix it. So for example right now these are kind of messed up not to my liking but I have the program running in SysTray so just a moment please. And reset. So first, let's look at just general use of web pages and things on a desktop system. I'll leave the camera in the middle of both screens here. So first is just your generic lorem ipsum page in terms of documenting. Sorry if it's a little bright. But either way, once you size up the desktop enough on Windows, Despite the monitor's really high resolution, it's very comfortable to use. Either screen, the text is incredibly sharp. Next here's an example of MSN. Again, just for general news or readability, very easy.
very clean, crisp. Here's an example of desktop directory, C drive directory. And a sample image folder I pull up really quick in Canon's Digital Photography Professional software. Even sample video from a 7D Mark II back when I went to Dubai a few months ago. Even though it's seven, uh, from a 72 to 80p 60, scale up to 4K just with the default media player. Looks great. Very smooth. Very sharp. Of course, photography or videography editing on 4K is just a treat. It's so crisp and sharp, and I barely even have to zoom in to proof images. Uh, and they, because they're much closer to native resolution because of the resolution increase of the screen. Again, showing the Dell on the left, the Samsung here on the right. And this is with a very sample folder I just pulled out from years of shooting, a few images here through Canon DPP. So I will show both these uh, monitors side by side and pull up a few of these images closer. See if that's between both screens there. At least to give you a very rough idea from how these appear at a few feet away where the camera is. Like I said, editing at 4K, if you have the horsepower for it, is absolutely amazing. Here's an example of a dress I shot last year. And let me just turn the exposure down just a tad here. You can see how just how much detail. I don't even have to zoom in that close at all at 4K, it's just pretty amazing. Alright, well that's great and all, but how about when you're a bit closer, maybe viewing the screen closer to maybe how you'd see through your own field of view, or if you're sitting close up. This is the dull screen here, and the camera is about a foot away with this lens, which is about a 75 millimeter and looks fine. And here is the Samsung. All right. Can't guarantee this focus is on, but to give you an idea. Now I can do the pan on side to side. Maybe hard to tell. But to me at least when you're actually using the screens, since I'm sitting fairly close or maybe closer than most people would, the Dell doesn't really shift much in terms of color or anything at all, even if you're looking at it left to right or um, from the sides. The Samsung being TN, you definitely would notice that a bit closer. Not sure if the color shift is really showing up, but um, needless to say, you can really tell a difference between panels when in actual use. For photography, it's not so bad, since you're usually looking at the center of the screen anyway. Uh, for gaming and other things, though, it is a bit more apparent, and I'll show that next. Alright guys, and here we are looking at WoW. 
just to show an example here where I have an NPC's chat log up for a quest. Not sure if that's readable, but at least on the Dell screen, I found that things like gaming lore and chat logs, which are always pushed to the side of the screens on these games, were very recognizable and readable on the Dell. I will excel that and you can see the chat log as well. Go for the font's just the limitation of Blizzard's engine, but that being aside, it's still very crisp, and if I focus on it, fairly readable. Here's approximately the same angle and so forth on the Samsung. For the Again, from far away, pretty reasonable. Here's the same angle at about a foot linearly from the screen, off at a 45 degree angle. Maybe a little closer or more extreme to what people who set the monitor close would see, but an example of looking at the chat log from the side. And here is seeing the same thing on the Samsung. Another thing to keep in mind is that, in general, Windows 10, when you're running resolutions this high, works great. Some of the programs, though, especially more legacy or just trouble programs and apps, don't like playing with the ultra-high resolution. As such, they launch an incredibly small and ant-sized Windows, a fix I had to rummage around, which I just call the Manifest Fix. If you Google it, you can find it on Reddit, and all it is is basically telling Windows Manifest to look for a program that either is or isn't high DPI aware and just bypass that to use Windows built-in scaling. Here I'll show an example. So here I'll launch Photoshop CS6 without being scaled properly. And you can see here that the UI is pretty unusable. It's incredibly small and yeah, you, you need really great vision for this, so that's not going to work. Again, I apologize for not having the code right in front of me, but the registry fix is pretty simple online. And basically how it works is you just make a new notepad, you know, text file, drop the code in, save it as a manifest file appending to the name of the executable that's in the same directory as each program that you want to override. It's a pretty easy fix. It is a workaround. It's mostly, again, for legacy programs that don't like super high-res displays and pretty much all of the Adobe suite, which, granted, I'm looking at CS6 or even uh, Adobe CC. Neither of these handle the high scaling well at all, which is kind of surprising from such a well-known company. But I can show the modifications here. I have the file highlighted uh, on Windows right here. So now that I have photoshop.exe.manifest in place with the proper code, all it simply again says is, hey, use Windows scaling. You know, pretty easy. Now that that's in place, I'll show you the difference. And there we go, a much bigger, much nicer, more usable sized interface that's probably more comparable to a traditional Photoshop layout. And here's another example looking at Adobe Premiere Pro under the same manifest override. Right now you can see there it says test, I've modified the file, so let's launch Premiere Pro by default and you can see what I mean. As you can see, it might be workable for those who have very, very acute vision, but it's a pretty small UI. And here's Premiere Pro with Manifest Override in place.
There we go, a much more usable sized UI. Another major difference I found when working between the Dell and the Samsung screens are that you can see here just a picture of a client's wedding dress with the cropping box enabled and between that there are some very faint grid lines as you adjust the scaling. And while it may be hard to see from here, uh, at this distance they're pretty good on both screens, but when you're working close up, very, very fine detail like those intermost grid lines, which are quite faint, on the Dell screen do show up to me much more readily uh, than on the Samsung screen. Again, that's just the difference because of the panel type. Hey guys, so hopefully you found this little hands-on review and perspective of using the Dell P2715Q and the Samsung U28E 590D to be helpful or at least insightful. Both as 4K monitors do a fantastic job of looking sharp, being great displays for a price point at this point, mid-December 2015, is practically a steal, you know, $500, $600 range. Very, very affordable, good quality displays. So with that being said, okay, Doug, you know, which one did you go with, the Dell or the Samsung? Because I've been used to using IPS and wanted that panel uniformity and clarity, I definitely decided to go with the Dell in the end. Um, that's not to say the Samsung is a bad screen, it's just after using it, after a while I found this, the way the TN panel would shift on me and the extra difficulty in resolving uh, photo detailing and elements at the sides of uh, games just to be a chore and lots of extra work and eye strain and it gave me a headache after using it for some time. Uh, not to say it's a bad screen, but for how close I was sitting, I found it just did not work well for me. Now that being said, it's not like I'm giving the Dell an A and the Samsung an F. Again, for the price, you're getting a great 4K screen on either monitor. Unless you're needing the ultra-fast refresh of the Samsung, the Dell on fast mode I found is totally sufficient for gaming and, and anything I've used it for. Uh, but if you're sitting more than, say, 18 inches, a couple feet, you know, half a meter or so back from the screens, and the TN can, you know, pan out and not shift, uh, if you're further away on a desk or mounting on a wall, then really, at that distance, you don't have any of the panel degradation and shifting that you'd see on TN sitting very close. And either way, um, it, both are great 4K screens, and both are very viable at that point just for how close I was sitting, I found the Dell to be a better choice for me. Now that being said, the Dell using DisplayPort to Mini DisplayPort and the Samsung using Full Size DisplayPort, both are 1.2, can do 4K 60Hz, no problem. And it's gaming, everything else, it's glorious, it looks fantastic. Both panels do offer HDMI, uh, Full Size HDMI, but that's 1.4, and that's a limitation of the panel not your graphics card, unless you have a newer card that's 2.0, or the cable, meaning if you connect these through HDMI, neither screen will do 4K 60 Hertz through HDMI. That's just a limitation. We'll have to see that come from future uh, panels and, and manufacturer updates. But for as it is right now, using DisplayPort works great. So again, without using professional calibration tools or shooting off camera, obviously these aren't uh, you know the best professional video, but hopefully for what it is, it gives you a great perspective of how these monitors compare uh, if you're looking to go into the 4K resolution. Uh, Windows 10 definitely suggested, uh, practically required, and obviously with the manifests and some bugs, DisplayPort, you have some workarounds, but for me going from a 1200p screen up to a 2160p or 4k UHD screen it's been a fantastic experience and something that if you have the horsepower to drive I'd most certainly recommend. So guys thank you very much for watching if you have questions feel free to leave them below comment like and subscribe and thank you for watching.